Good morning, beautiful people. Good morning. It's a joy to be at Campbell Church, and especially an opportunity to witness a church that really lives its values, creativity and authenticity and warmth, and to really make a difference in the lives of people. I'm especially appreciative of the invitation from my dear friend and colleague, Andy Bryan, by far one of the greatest preachers of our time, one of the most prolific leaders of our time. <laughs> and he follows a line of great preachers. <laughs> For my great friendship with his father and remembrance of his grandfather, who really has set a legacy for future generations. And then to be with the great leadership of Adrian, Amen. Denson Ewell. We give thanks. <laughs> I'm glad my colleagues here this morning to cheer me on, Lynn Dyke, your district superintendent. I'm grateful for the music that has just lifted my soul. Amen. Thank you so much for already blessing me. Now, as I think about this morning and Confirmation Sunday, such an important day, as we think about what it means to not just belong to the church or, or to join the church, but what it really means to be a disciple, to follow Jesus Christ. I go back to my early days of remembering my own confirmation, in which I was in church with my twin sister, and we were not listening to anything, but suddenly there were announcements. And it said, confirmation class is getting ready to start. So our mom kind of nudges and said, you all are going. Going to what? Confirmation class. Well, what is that? She says, it's where you learn about the church and you become a member and you're going to understand the history and all that good stuff. Well, so well, how long is that going to take? <laughs> she said, well, it's, it's a couple of months, but you learn and you'll have a great time. He said, look, let's cut this short. We'll just join. She said, it doesn't work that way. And it shouldn't work that way. For all of us who seek to understand what it means to really be a part of discipleship, to be a part of following Christ, we need time to study, to learn and grow. And confirmation is not about a one-time thing you do. It's that beginning of an ongoing journey for the rest of your life. I'm mindful that our youth director was the person that led the class, and we really gave him a hard time. We gave him all kinds of hard questions, and as we continued, just with great, tremendous grace, he'd say, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> well, let's talk about this some more. And as he shared his faith, and then our pastor came in and shared how he became a Christian, my heart was strangely warmed. I don't remember a lot about the class, but what I do remember is that the individuals who shared their faith with me shaped my ministry, shaped my call, and shaped my life to the point that the reason I'm a United Methodist is because someone offered Christ to me. And, and really, that's really what this, this thing of confirmation really is all about. I don't know how many of you remember your own class or, or if some of you are contemplating joining the church or, or have been thinking over the years about what it has meant to you. You are about the task of, of thinking about what it means to answer this question. Why am I here? And what's the point of my life? That really, we, we we're here to, to find out what that means in our questions. We are constantly trying to figure out what it means to be a Christian. And the reality is, for most of us, we struggle with that most of our lives trying to get it right. Because the, the real danger or the real challenge really of confirmation is that we say yes to things of our prayers, our presence, our times, our gifts, our service, our witness. We are so easy at saying that, but it's so difficult to keep it going. That the greatest challenge we have is seeking Christ first because the reality is we are more in tune to our cell phone than we are with FaceTime with God. Hello. <laughs> that we find ourselves consistently 
trying to keep up with maddening schedules of all kinds of activities. And God gets squeezed just a little bit less to be a part of helping you to take your mess and make it a message. We live in a world today where we're just on the go. And it causes us to be weary. It causes us to be unhealthy. It causes us to oftentimes just feel confused. What is it about confirmation? What is it about this day that's important? It is to remind us that God comes to us. To invite us into a relationship where we get to find some answers to our life. Pretty good, isn't it? Let us stand as we think about some real questions that enable us to think about this day and what it means to truly be a Methodist. Here now out of Matthew 22, verses 34 through 40. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He responds, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your with all of your and with all of your and a second is like it that you shall love your neighbor as your on these two commandments hangs your life <laughs> the law your direction be seated This text this morning is a reminder of what it really means to follow the way of Christ. This is really, no matter what the confirmands have have reviewed and studied, this is what at the heart of what it means to follow the faith that John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, really saw really as the hallmark of his whole ministry. And as he looked at this text and reflected upon it, he began to talk about the characteristics of what it means or the marks of distinctiveness of what it means to be a Methodist. Now let me tell you, in my class, all 10 of us were characters. There was no doubt about that. We all had our unique activities of just causing a little trouble. But we were good. We were good overall. But the characters of becoming a Methodist really invoked in me something about what we are about today. And that is, in his writings, he suggests that we are to love God. That in these mantras are of love, of praising God, rejoicing in God, praying consistently with God, serving others with the love of God. That in these practices is a way in which to live, to grow, to thrive, and yes, be healthy. So as we think about this text today, knowing that the, the very essence of this message really is about a way of living, we know that he was this particular Pharisee lawyer who thought he was smarter than a fifth grader, <laughs> thinking he could trap Jesus because there were some 613 laws. And he thought, oh, he, he won't remember all of them. So we'll just see which one he can pick out to say is the best. Well, it doesn't get any better than this. And he says, you're to love the Lord your God with your heart, your mind, your soul, and your neighbor as yourself. Two things I want to share out of these very five important practices of, of what it really means to have the character of a Methodist and the spirit of Christ. The, the two things that really stand out for me today when I think about the confirmants and think about my own ministry and think about the questions in my own life that I need to answer, the very first and important piece is that truly we are to love God with all of our heart, with all of our mind, with all of our soul, and all of our being. With all of our strength, some texts say that really means with all of your fiber that's within you. That you're to love God in a way that you realize something happened in your life that first God so loved you 
that you are compelled to then express that love to others. That God has done something in you that makes you understand that you are special in the eyes of God, that you are a child of God. And because of that, you build on that through Bible study, through small group ministries, through support groups, through times of pain and sickness and sorrow, of, of singing, of rejoicing, of ultimately being with the family called the church. I'm reminded of two worshipers. Both went to the same church. The first one, spirited, got up in the morning early, got his praise on, began to sing his song, Oh, how I love Jesus, got going. He moved out and he got his Bible together, got ready to go to church, couldn't wait to see the people. As he got out of his car, he'd greet folk coming in, guests. He'd come into the church, hug folk he knew, didn't know, found himself spirited, loving every minute of it. The beauty of the world, the beauty of the possibilities of being the person God wants him to be. And knowing God had touched his life, he loved every minute of the message of the pastor. He loved every minute of the music. He loved every minute being with the people of God. Second worshiper came in, really didn't want to get out of bed, wondered why he came to church, but consistently came. And his whole task of that day was to look and find something wrong with the worship. Oh gosh, here we go with that friendly stuff this morning. Got to go shake hands with people. Okay, let me find one. Sits down very quickly, doesn't look at them, just say, okay. He then hears the music. Oh, that music's too loud. <laughs> what are we doing with drums? Hmm. My goodness, what's wrong with these folk? Hmm. Preacher, preach too long. You may say the same thing this morning. <laughs> uh, but he criticized to the point that when he got through, he went up to the preacher and said, hmm, another Sunday. Need to work on it. <laughs> and here we have two different Spirit. One, very positive, connected to the love of God. The other, needing a little work in finding the love of God. Where's your spirit this morning? What is it about you that folk generate and feel the love of God? I come to church because I know I'm an imperfect person and I know that the church is not perfect so that I'm here for folk to help get me to get my life together. I'm here because I know somebody will pray for me. I know someone will reach out to me. I have the joy of the Lord because it was the joy my parents had. It was the joy of confirmation. It was the joy of being confirmed by people in worship who said God has something good for you. I'm here because I want to get better. Don't know about you. So I don't criticize like some folk do. Some folk won't get it until they stop being critical and let God just Reach in and take over. Real worship of God is when you just love everything, even when it's not as great as it could be. But you're helping to make it better. Amen? Amen. Not only that, this loving God with a heart, mind, and soul, and strength, because God has done something through us to love us and reach into our pains, our sinfulness, and forgiveness of, of helping us to start anew that then we serve others. We serve others who we know are in our care, who are our neighbors. This kind of love, friend, is the kind of love that it's not the people you know, it's the people you don't know. It's loving those who don't look like you or act like you or speak like you or talk like you or have had the same things. It's just loving everybody because God loves everybody. There's a youth group, I can't wait to tell the conference about this, but a youth group that was in a Sunday school class, they were having a lesson on how to teach or, or, or reach out to people and share the love of God. And so as they were thinking about service, immediately a couple of friends in the class knew of one person who was really having a tough time at school. This young friend had gotten a text from a couple of people who just came after her for no reason and said, you're not good enough. You don't look good. We don't like you. Why are you at this school? And as she began 
to look at that, she began to withdraw. She began to, even though in the midst of all the people trying to, to remind her that it was okay to just let that go, she couldn't let it go. She even thought about giving up her life. You know, we do have people today who really struggle with the reality of those who really are just saying mean things today. We need to be sharing the love of God. So she was invited by that class to come to an afternoon party. But it wasn't any kind of party. It was a church party of young people who planned to have all kinds of activities, to have the pizza ready, but more importantly toward the end, to have a time in which folk would have about three cards and each one was to share something they liked and saw of God in that person. And as they began to go through those cards, the friend really hesitated. She really didn't want to go through this. But she did write some things. And then she picked up her cards. And what she saw brought tears to her eyes as she realized that God loved her just as she was. That there are people who love her and value her. And what we must begin in our own sense of serving others is to remind people they matter. From 12 years old to 100, that we don't lose sight of forgetting those who brought us this far by faith, but also helping those who are struggling in their faith and the fact that I'm struggling with my own faith. We are in this together. I'm here as a United Methodist because of the fact that somebody has supported and prayed and loved me, that reminded me I can make it. That's what it means to be a Methodist today. You get it? For all of us, it is the task of really asking ourselves, why am I here? What is it, God, that I'm to do? I went uh, looking through and searching through uh, various kinds of uh, uh, notes and papers that were sharing the latest things that are happening in the world and uh, ultimately ran into a thing that talked about new technology in Walgreens and certain stores where there is this brand new way in which they are putting cameras inside of the coolers. So watch what you're doing when you go to the stores, what you're buying. But <laughs> they're doing this so that they can market to find out what people really like. But they're also doing it to see who's coming to the store, what their age is, and I really find this fascinating. They want to see what the mood is of the persons that come in. So I thought about that for a moment and thought, well, what would it mean for one of us to come in? Open the cooler and they're taking a picture of us and you're getting that ice cream you shouldn't get. No, no, not us, not us, no, no, no. We're there to get the smart water, the big bottle of water, right? That is the manager and the crew begin to review the pictures and, and the camera and the video, that somehow or another, something happens to them, something they didn't expect. That when they saw possibly somebody from Campbell, they saw a new car for man, they saw somebody who sings in the church, saw somebody who works with a small group, saw somebody with a prayer team, that when they saw them open that cooler, Something changed in them. They, they knew there was something strange about them. They knew that they were people who loved the God. A God who's, who's all powerful and all knowing and all loving. Omniscient and omnipresent. That they knew these are some folk who have the, the joy of God. Who pray constantly, consistently, ceasingly with God. They're the folk who seek to help others know they're loved by God. They're in Mozambique and they're around the world that they see something in you. How cool would that be? May it be so. May it be so. The question, why am I here? Because I love the Lord. With all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. What's the point of my life? To love others.